five flying cars that really existed. Number five, the Convair Model 116 flying car took flight for the first time in 1946 and looked like nothing more than a small plane welded onto a car. And essentially, that's exactly what it was. The wings, tail, and propeller could be detached from the plastic car, allowing it to be driven like a regular vehicle on the road. When it needed to go where no roads could take it, the plane attachment was fitted on. The 116 model only had one prototype, which itself managed a whopping 66 flights. A few years later, designer Ted Hall recreated the machine as the Convair Model 118, bumping the engine from a 130 horsepower model to a 190 horsepower beast that gave it more power in the air. Convair planned to build 160,000 for their first production run, but that never panned out, thanks to a tragedy which saw one of the prototypes crash in California. When the pilot took the cab into the air, he had assumed that the fuel tank was full. But the Convair car had two fuel gauges, one for the car's engine and one for the planes. And while the car still had plenty of gas, the plane engine ran dry in midair. Such are the dangers of multitasking. Number four. In 1971, the Advanced Vehicle Engineers Company in California decided to design a flying car that was reminiscent of the Conair car of the 1940s. They took a Ford Pinto, welded a Cessna Skymaster to the top, and essentially called it a day. The bizarre hybrid monster that resulted was dubbed the Ave Mizar. The car haft of the craft was fairly similar to any normal Ford Pinto on the street. The Pinto's engine brought the plane up to speed for takeoff, at which point the plane's propeller took over. Upon landing, the car's brakes were responsible for slowing it down. Unfortunately, in 1973, just a year before the car was scheduled to begin mass production, the right wing of one prototype crumbled in midair. The car plummeted to the ground, taking any future it might have had with it. Number 3. The Curtis Wright VZ-7 resulted from one of the first attempts by the U.S. military to get involved in the flying car industry. Ideally, the VZ-7 was meant to be a type of flying Jeep. Like a Jeep, it allowed the pilot to maneuver through rough terrain on the ground, but with the not insignificant bonus that it could also fly. It was developed by Curtis Wright, which, interestingly, formed through the merger of the Wright Company, the Wright Brothers, and Curtis Aeroplane, Glenn Curtis. Curtis and the Wright brothers had been fierce rivals during the early days of aviation. The VZ-7 was designed as a VTOL craft, vertical takeoff and landing. It flew with the aid of four upright propellers, which were positioned behind the cockpit, more or less just an open air seat. In order to maneuver, the pilot could change the speed of individual propellers, tilting the craft forwards, backwards, or to the side. Technical aspects aside, the entire thing was a death trap, since none of the propellers were covered, and in 1960, the Army canceled the project just two years after its commencement. Number two. With the V-7Z grounded forever, the Army turned to a very different prototype, the Piasecki V-78 Air Jeep. Bear in mind that helicopters had already become popular by this point, but it turned out that the military was interested in something smaller than helicopters, which could be successfully flown with less training. The Air Jeep went through seven different versions before it was finally deemed unfit for military use. But they all kept the basic design, two large vertical propellers in the front and the back of the craft, with a seat in the middle for the pilot and either three or four wheels for ground use. While the first model was flat, later ones curved upwards at the front and back to form a flattened V-shape. The Navy even tried to fit one model with floats, with the hope of using it at sea, but that idea was eventually abandoned, along with the rest of the program. Number 1. In 2009, the Terrafugia Transition had its first successful test flight. Since then, it's gone through a whirlwind of upgrades and remodels resulting in several completely new designs and a second successful test flight in 2012. In many cases, the transition finally offers something that at least looks futuristic. It has the aerodynamic shape of a plane, with wings that fold in and then swivel into a vertical position while on the ground. It can reach up to 70 miles per hour, 110 kilometers per hour on the highway, and 115 miles per hour, 
185 km per hour in the air. One problem that the company faced in designing the transition was that it was too heavy to comply with FAA regulations due to all the extra parts needed to be safe on the road, such as bumpers and airbags, for instance. In 2010, the FAA decided to let the flying car slide through the regulations, which changes its classification and makes it easier to get the appropriate pilot's license. Unfortunately, it still costs more than a Lamborghini.